this is Dina. Welcome to my channel. Y'all, I am back. It's Saturday morning. It's about a quarter to 10 and I have been working on my next project. Been trying to decide how I want to make this. I wanted to make some small little boxy type pouches for keychains for my craft fair. So I've tried several different ways to do it and I think I've come up with the one I want to do. So um, before I get started, let me invite you to go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you're not. Um, I have a lot of content all the time and it comes from hauls, sewing, paper crafting, sublimation, cricket crafting, um, whatever. I, I like to try it all. Painting on wood, I like to try it all. So if this is something that you're enjoying that you like and I sure hope that you will consider hitting the subscribe button and come back. Okay, be a part of my family. So anyway, let's just get going on this. So I decided I was going to make some boxy pouches. You see, I've made a couple different ones here. And so this is the first one I did yesterday. It's very simple to make, super cute, but I thought, you know what? Okay, it wasn't exactly what I was thinking that I wanted. I'm using scraps of fabric to make these as well. And this was a little bit bigger than what I wanted to do. So we're gonna knock that one out. Before I went to bed last night, oops, I got a little thread there. I made this one. It's a perfect little size. It really is. You can see you can hold it in my hand. I did quilt it and so forth. It does look really good that way. And yeah, so, so cute. You can see it's lined and everything. And it was really easy to make. Then this morning I got up and I decided, you know what, I wanna make my little boxy pouch taller and make it a little bit more easier to do, a little bit more less steps. So I'm going with this one. I fell in love with this one when I sewed it and look at that, how cute is it? And look, isn't that so cute? I love it and I love the way it stands up and it keeps its shape and form and all that. And I think that these will be great for your craft fair if you wanna add keychains on there. I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I, this one I just put a D-ring on it, but I think going forward, I might put a D-ring with a lobster clasp on it. I don't know if that's called a lobster clasp. Is that called a lobster clasp? Maybe it is. Um, but that is what I'm going to do. I need to check. I wanna make sure. Okay, you can kind of think of it as like a swivel hook. Here's a bigger one. I'm not going to use it for this. This bag is way too big, but it's one that I have in my stash. Um, it goes for a bigger project. But anyway, you can kind of see what it would look like. So this is what I'm going to be using. I think I ordered these on Amazon. I'll see if I can find it and link below. I've got several of these still in my stash, and I've had them for a long time. Let's just get going. What you're going to need is you're going to need some kind of D-ring or lobster or like swivel hook clasp like this. You're going to need some fabric. You're going to need a piece of inter interfacing. You only need one. I've got two there because I was cutting them up so I could start making more. You're going to need a, you're going to need um, a zipper. You're going to need, well, I used a little bit of this heat and bond, um, a rotary cutter, scissors, sewing machine. Um, yeah, and this, this fusible fleece is just not too thick, but it's got glue on one side. Helps it to hold it together because I am going to quilt this. Okay, and then you're going to need um, two little squares, two by two. And I made my pouch six across by nine. This is going to be my outer fabric. This is going to be my inner fabric. Okay, okay, so the first thing we're going to do, let's move these out of the way. Move this guy over here. We don't need it yet. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab my ironing mat here. And I'm going to put the put my outer fabric face down. I'm going to layer it up with my fleece, my fusible fleece. And I get mine, I usually I get it at Michael's. And I can't tell you what the Pellin number is, but if you go to your Michaels, you get one that's fusible on one side, at least one side. So now I'm just going to shoot this with some heat. And I'm going to get this ironed down. When you quilt something, you don't be intimidated by the word quilting. Um, all it is is, show, is sewing lines on your project. That's all it is. 
So when you quilt something, if you have a fusible piece on there, it helps to kind of keep them together. If you don't have that, use what you have, it's fine. I just, this is what I just prefer. Oh, grabbing, a, grabbing a pair of scissors. There we go. And I want to just get these little threads from the fabric off. Probably shouldn't worry about that yet. Okay, so make sure you've got it all ironed down. And then what you're going to do, flip it over. You're going to take your other piece. It'll be your inner piece. And you're going to layer it up on top. Now this side is not fusible, but I'm going to shoot it with some heat. Kind of get it nice and flat. Now, if you have one of these things, I don't know what this thing is called. I've had it in my stash a long time. I think I saw um, the Crafty Gemini use one years ago, and that's when I invested in it. It helps to smooth things out really nice and flat. Now, um, my fabric is a little bit larger on the bottom one, but you know what? I'm going to quilt it and then square it up so I'm not going to worry about it. So now I'm just going to go ahead. We're going to get this over on the sewing machine, and we are going to quilt this we're just going to sew lines on it that's all we're going to do so let's get over to the sewing machine okay so about my sewing machine i am using my Sanger modern quilter um if you're new to my channel this is a good old workhorse machine i've had this in like nine years almost and so i i love this machine one day i would like to invest in something maybe cuter and better and you know all the good stuff but for now my good old workhorse is going to continue to work for me so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to determine how big we want a quilt um so i like to use if you don't draw lines on your on your fabric or if you can't eyeball it really well use something as a guide to try to keep your lines as straight as you can so um, I'm gonna use the edge of the plate here as my guide and I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm going to just slowly get going and I'm just gonna use that as a guide and so straight down off the edge of my fabric Okay, now that I got one row, I'm gonna trim that gently. And I like to trim these threads off, so I'm gonna keep going now. The next one, I am going to use my guide of my thread here, line it up with the edge of that presser foot or that plate here. And I'm just going to start sewing using that as my guide the best I can. Try to sew as just as straight as I can. It doesn't have to be perfect. Nothing is perfect. So not too bad. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to move it over again. I'm going to use the next line as my guide for quilting. And you can make these smaller if you want. I'm just going to go with this way. I am using Guterman thread as I always do. I never stray, I love it. Um, and I am using a two and a half stitch length. My needle is a 9014. It works well for me, so I keep using it. Gonna move over to the next one. And I think um, I might end it by sewing the very ends too, just to hold things in place. So I think you get what to do here. This is the easy part here. And I'm gonna continue to use that as a guide and I'll trim things in a second. And I'm gonna go one more here and then I'll sew down. Oopsie, I am not on the very end. I wanna make sure I am. Okay, here I go. Okay, 
So now I've pretty much got my back fabric in place. So now I'm gonna turn it. I'm gonna turn it. Let me trim my threads here so they don't get caught on anything. Okay. I'm gonna turn it now where I'm now sewing down the nine inch side. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to line this up with the side. And this is probably gonna be like two. I think I am going to come back and sew the edges just because I want them to lay flat. Um, I'm, maybe, we'll see. Okay. Okay. And now there's that one. So now we've already got a little little quilty looking pattern going. It's not the straightest, but I'm okay with that. It's going to be great. Moving it over, lining the seam up with the edge of my plate. I think it will need another one, and I did not sew that straight. Ooh, Dina. But, Dina, it's so good. Okay, trimming that thread so it doesn't get in my way. I'm gonna go over here, and I'm going to try to do the best I can. Sometimes if you draw lines on the project, like with a friction pin or something like that, it helps but just do the best you can. I don't think you're gonna notice if it's not totally, your lines aren't totally straight. Cause y'all, I'm not a perfect sewer. I'm far from that. I just try my best, okay? This is what it looks like. Let's get back over to my table. Okay, so now I have got my quilt lines. This one right here is kinda going to running amuck on me, but Dina is not gonna stress. Okay, I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm just going to kind of I kind of line up my the edge of the ruler, and I just want my sides to be straight. See how nice and straight that become. So I'm going to try to just kind of square it up all the way around, just a little bit. Because I like I want it to be nice and even. So there we go. That looks good. Let me see. That side looks pretty good. That side looks pretty good. Okay. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take a zipper. Do not be intimidated by a zipper. Okay. Um, and one thing, I, before we do the zipper, one thing I'm going to say, let's go ahead and do. I think what I'm going to do is let's zigzag all the way around. I did not do this on the other one, but I'm going to add this in. I want to do a zigzag stitch all around the edge. That way it'll kind of seal things in. So I'm going to do that and I'll be back. So to zigzag all around it. The reason I did that is so, because the inside of the, sorry for my arm, y'all. The inside here, um, you just see the where they're sewed together. And it kind of, I think it will kind of, kind of seal them a little bit for, try to keep it from fraying and stuff. So we're going to go with that. So that's why I went ahead and did that. Now we're going to take our zipper. Don't be intimidated. Let's start with this. I kind of like this side. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your zipper. And this, you can use any zipper as long as it's longer than the project. Okay. This one is a nine inch. Okay. Let me see what did I do with my clips. There they are. And I'm going to take my Wonder Clips, okay, and I'm going to put teeth side down, and I'm going to line this up with the edge of my project. Now, by me quilting it and adding the liner and all that together, I don't have to worry about my sandwich pieces inside kind of moving around on me. They're already sewed down, okay? So now I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew this straight down. Let's get it. Okay, so I'm going to use my zipper foot for this part. That's what this is. Now I know there are some zipper foots and it's kind of tiny. I kind of want to find one of those. But until then, this is what came with my machine. So I'm just going to add, put my zipper foot. I like to have my thread going off to the left there. And I'm going to go ahead and put my 
put this right over and actually come here thread I, one time I called it string just because my mom always called it string and somebody came there were lots of people that came out to me and said it isn't th string it's thread I know y'all I know if I ever call it string it's okay okay so got my presser foot down I'm using the edge of my zipper foot as a guide to go along um, this right here where the teeth go together. Oopsie, and I still have it on zipper. Get it back over, or zigzag. Let me get back over. I'm gonna go back a little bit, and I'm just gonna go with it. And I've got a thread right there. I want that to go behind, okay. Now I'm gonna make sure I'm lined up, and I'm just going to sew. Y'all, you can't stress over things. You have to just try, okay? If you're new to sewing, just try. That's all you have to do. If you're new to any craft, just try. When you get down to the end, you can back stitch. It is gonna be sewed, but back stitch that. Okay, so one side of the zipper is already in place, so isn't that easy? Um, got a little threads coming over here. Let me get this. Okay, so now we're gonna get back over to my table because I've added in a little step to kind of help with this, okay? Okay, so I'm going to use this heat and bond. It's 3 8 of an inch roll of heat and bond. And I'm going to just pull off one piece, the width of my fabric, and I'm just going to tear it. That's all I'm going to need is one because it's too wide. So I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to cut it in half. So I'm going to line it up here on my mat and I'm going to cut it in half and use both pieces. Oops, I better move over because I'm not going to have enough space. I have to rearrange. So I'm going to just go down like the middle, use my rotary cutter, cut this in half, and then I'm going to go back over here to my, to my uh, project. And here's where the zipper is. See that? See how it sticks up? So what I'm going to do, let me get you down a little more. I'm going to take one strip of this, and you, this has a glue side and a paper side. Glue side down, and I'm going to iron this to my project. Okay, it doesn't take much. And then I'm gonna make sure that it adhered. It's still very hot. And I have people ask about my iron. I have an Oliso, Oliso iron. And I love it. Got it on Amazon. I haven't seen it in pink recently. It's kind of hot, y'all. I have to give it a sec. Okay, I'm going to peel that off. I haven't seen it in pink, but it does come in other colors. Okay. So now what you're going to do is you got that. I peeled off the paper. You can see you got the glue right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to fold this down and I'm going to use my iron going along there because I want it to help this part to lay down. It'll make it a little easier when I put a top stitch. So once you do that, flip it over. See that, that zipper looks really good except where the thread is, but that's going to get cut off so I'm not going to worry. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take it to your sewing machine and do a top stitch going right along there. Okay, so I'm gonna go do that and I'll be back. So I have did my top stitch going right down. Now, if you notice, my zipper of course is way too long. The reason that I made it kind of lopsided and had this part way over here because it kind of gets in the way of my sewing. And so once I'm once I'm gonna cut off the end anyway, and this is gonna be in the middle. So I this is what I do. It makes it a little bit easier to me. Having that zipper pull in the way is just it just makes it harder. Okay. So the next step of what you're going to do is you're going to bring up the bottom, and you're gonna bring it to this other side of your your fabric, lining up the sides. 
I'm gonna use my clips and I'm going to line this up just like that. Now I'm gonna take this to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew down this side using my zipper foot. Let's get back up. Okay, so I'm gonna remove my first clip, making sure my zipper is lined up. And I'm going to put the inside of my zipper foot against the zipper. The zipper. And gradually, let me, let me get this thread. It's so hard to reach. There, get back there. Okay. Now I'm gonna just gently just sew, using that as a guide. And making sure everything is still lined up with the edge. And get down the end. You can sit, you can back stitch at the beginning and the end if you like. It's gonna be sewed anyway. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing like we did. Um, we're going to put the heat and bond underneath this part. So, but what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to now take your zipper and unzip it. You can unzip it as far as it'll go this time. And then you're going to be folding this down. You're going to put your heat and bond right there and you're gonna iron that down and then you're gonna top stitch this one down, okay? So let me go put my heat and bond on and then we will come back and do the top stitch on this one. We're half done, y'all, we're half okay. done. Got that ironed down. Top stitch this right along the edge. Just kind of gives it a more finished look. Helps things to lay down. And last clip, I'm gonna pull this off. Getting down here to this corner is going to be the tricky part. But I'm gonna do my best, making sure everything is out of the way. Okay, there we go. That'll work. Not too shabby. Okay, so now we are, this is where we're at, okay? By me zigzagging, it kind of helped that things are a little bit more finished and plus to the zipper on the inside, it covers where you don't look like you have tons of raw edges. So there we go. Look at that, the zipper is working perfectly. Okay, we have another step, let's get going. So now your next step will be take it and it's inside out. Ignore the threads. We're going to bring them on in the end, off in the end. You're going to make sure your zipper is at the top and you're going to make sure everything's folded down just perfectly. As straight as you can get it. And then you're going to take a pin and you're going to find your center. Do that on both sides. Now this side right here, we got the zipper. It's kind of, it's not zipped together. So just hold it together and find your mark okay it is a good help if you will take your go to the machine and you will sew your zipper like off the edge here together and that's what I'm going to do kind of keeps things together so um, let me do that really fast before we move on to the next okay, step. so as you see I kind of sewed over the end of my zipper there just kind of hold it in place make sure your zipper pull at this point is in the middle okay so now what you're going to do is you're going to take those little lines that you have drawn on and you're going to line them up with the center of your zipper okay so i'm going to go take i'm going to take my clips and i'm going to flatten this out i'm going to do the same thing to this side and then we have one more step before we zip this up or we actually sew this up okay i'm going to make sure that looks good Okay, so now what you're gonna do is these two pieces that you had um, cut in the beginning, these are two by twos. You're, what you're gonna do is you're gonna iron them in half. You're gonna make the little pulls, okay? 
You're gonna sew it in, or you iron it in half, open it up, and then iron it toward that center imaginary line that you ironed. And then you're going to get that pressed down. I like to use my little flapper thing. I think that's what this is called, I don't know. I got it on Amazon and it really flattens it out nicely. Let's do the other one. Iron together, open and iron toward the imaginary line. Oops, gotta make sure I got it ironed lined up right here. There's one, two. Folding them toward in the middle, folding that down. Getting that pressed down really well. I'm gonna put my little thing on here. Use something that will flatten it out or you can skip part, it doesn't matter. But you see how nice and flat it makes it? So I'm gonna go to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew a seam down one side, down the other for both of my little pieces. And then we're gonna get ready to attach them to my, my pouch. Okay, so I have sewed down one side and down the other on both of them. This one I went ahead and sewed a little seam at the very end just to keep it in place. And this one I wanna attach my little swivel hook here. I guess that's what it's called. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this on my swivel hook and it's gonna be a perfect size for these. And now I'm gonna go and I'm just gonna sew a little seam right there just to hold this in place. Okay. Now that I've got them all ready, this is what this looks like. You want to make sure that the seam part is up inside that you're going to seam and the pretty side is going to be out hanging out so on the side that you um that the side that you sewed closed right there we want to put the swivel hook over there i just prefer that this side i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to put this one you want to put the pretty side face up in there and you're going to line it up just like that Use a couple clips and we're gonna sew that in place. Okay, now we're gonna sew a seam going all the way down. I'm gonna go ahead and get this one ready. So let me flip this off for a second. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put that. Right inside there like that. Make sure that clasp is not in the way use your clips we're under clips these clips are very helpful with this project okay now i'm going to sew a seam there and the seam there okay so i'm going to pull off my first clip on one end and i'm going to gently start in a few stitches you can back stitch if you want but it really isn't going to matter and you're going to understand that in a second I'm gonna go ahead and kind of get going. And then I'm going to pull out my clips holding my little tabs in place. And I'm pull off my last clip and go off the end. And just because of security, I want everything to be nice and nice and tight here. I'm gonna sew another seam across it, just kind of kind of making it look a little bit really nice and nice nice and tucked in and stable there so I'm gonna do it again make sure I get that zipper because you know there's wear and tear on that zipper okay now I'm gonna go and do the other side Here I go. Put my thread out of the way here. And go ahead. Holding things in place when you get to your zipper. Keep sewing. When you're on the other side, so, and then I'm gonna do it again. We're almost done. 
almost there. Are you with me? Tell me if you're with me. I know this is lengthy, but projects take time. And I know it's hard if I watch something if someone doesn't try to do things step by step. I need step by step. Okay, there we go. Okay, back to my table and let's move to the next step. Okay, at this point, you can cut off the, the leftover part of the zipper. Okay, I'm gonna cut. Let's cut that off. You don't need it, it's in your way. I'm gonna cut this one as well. Okay, so there we go. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take your project, let's go on this side, and I this is um, what I used for my other one. And what I did is it's a quarter of an inch inside of the seam to end, quarter of an inch up. So once I measured that, I just kept the little corner so they'd all look the same. And I'm gonna use my marker and I'm gonna draw on all four corners. This is the exciting part. I probably get so one little, one little um, pouch here, probably in less than 30 minutes start to finish, if, <laughs> if I wasn't filming. Filming, you have to stop and start a lot. It's a lot of work on the filming. That's why I don't do sewing videos all the time because of the amount of time it takes. So I hope it's helpful because that's really why I do it as I do it for you guys. Now, I've got my four corners already cut or drawn on. Take my scissors. And I'm going to cut off that corner little thread right there I'm gonna cut all my corners see by cutting by doing one and then using that you use the other use it as a template I'm gonna cut and this and if you want to make your corners bigger go ahead that just means your boxy thing is not going to be as wide it's going to be taller this is what makes it boxy. Last side. I don't want to just pull it. There we go. So there I got my corners. Okay. So now what you're going to do is I'm gonna take, put my finger in there and I'm gonna open that zipper up a little more. And what you're going to do is you're gonna take your marker. I'm using a marker, I have a friction print somewhere, but it doesn't matter, I'm sewing so here. I'm gonna put a mark where the center is on all of these. Okay, I know that's a little close, I'm sorry and this side okay okay now what you're going to do is you're going to reach up inside and you're going to take this and you're going to match up that side seam with the mark that you have have put on there and you're going to just clip it then you're going to take it to your sewing machine and you're going to sew I'm gonna sew it like twice. And I'm gonna do that for all four corners. So let's do one together and then I'll do the rest of them off of camera. Okay, I'm gonna pull out. Well, I'm gonna make sure nothing shifted on me. And if you can do this without clipping, go for it. I'm gonna back stitch there. And I'm gonna go so all the way to the other end and I'm gonna back stitch. I am going to zigzag over this just when I'm done because I wanna kind of seal the seams in a little bit, if that makes sense. 
I'm gonna go ahead, let me go ahead and do that while I've got this one, and then I'll do the rest off camera. Putting on my zigzag, and I'm going to just put my fabric right on the edge there. You just wanna make sure that you're close to the edge. And I'm gonna do that to the other three corners. And I will be back, and y'all, we will be done. The reveal is coming. That's the best part. Okay, so now we're gonna turn it right side out. How cute is it? And you can explore so many different patterns of fabric and so forth, and you will absolutely just love making these. I'm addicted. I'm going to make more. I've got a little errands to run. Tomorrow is Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers and anybody that acts like a father. You know, everybody is, you know, we all are just in this together here. So, just want to make sure. Look how it sticks up. Oh, I love it. And I'm going to go. Look at that. Oh, it's so cute, y'all. I love it. Now I've got two. This is a winner. It is easy and it's a winner. I like this. Let me go grab a little a little um, rubber band tie to put on okay, there. So I have these. I got them at Walmart and I thought these would be super cute for me to use. Let's see here since I don't have a purple. I think for this one I'll go with a clear one. Let me see if I can unclip these. And I'm gonna have to tear that middle and grab off one of these. So this is a, so you can carry it on your wrist if you like. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this on here and look, I will be selling them with these. So these will be in my craft fair. You can walk around carry it. You can put your chapstick, you can put your money, you can put your car key in here. It's so much space, look, and it's precious. I'm loving this, oh, so cute. So anyway, that is it. That is my, I'm gonna call this my crafty boxy pouch. And I think that this is darling. Now let me see, the end result of the size is three and a half by two and a half. And the height is, let me see the height, is about two. So it's a great size great size you can put your you can put your money in there you know if you want to just grab this you want to go to a craft fair or something and you want to put your money in there and your chapstick or your car key you got it all you got to do is grab this and go so anyway it will work out perfect anyway thanks so much everyone for watching i hope you have enjoyed this this is my my trials of different kind of pouches i wanted to make it small i ended up not liking how this one came out so i nixed that one that one is uh, -uh. and then this one is so this is cute but i do like them um, taller so I really think that what helps it to stand up to is I think because it's quilted and you put that interfacing in there. So just, I'll see if I can locate some kind of interfacing. It's fusible, I'll link it below. Um, the fabric, I got it at Joanne Fabrics. The zipper, um, I probably got them on Amazon or Walmart or something, you can buy them anywhere. Just make sure you get the nylon zipper and the little class. I'll see what I can do to link everything below. Anyway, so let's talk about how much I would charge for these at my my craft fair. Um, it is a little time consuming to make these. So I'm thinking, let me know what you think. I'm thinking that these can be $8. I think that they are cute and functional and I think $8, it doesn't take much, uh, maybe 10. Let me know what you think. Do you think the eight or 10 is a good price for this? Because I'm thinking, I don't wanna overcharge, but also wanna make a little bit of time. It doesn't take much fabric, that's the thing. So I'm thinking that's why I think eight or $10 is a good price for these little, these little boxy pouches. I'm thinking $8 would probably be good. Anyway, let me know what you think. Let me know if you enjoyed this. I hope you stuck with me at the end. Y'all, the reveal is at the end. 
And um, thanks so much, everyone. And I hope you guys have a wonderful Saturday. I am going to put, get this video put together. And, and then I'm going to get my shower. I've got some errands to run. I need to go get my husband something for Father's Day. Um, we're going to take him to lunch tomorrow. And my, my one of my daughters is coming. The other one, she can't come. So we'll do Father's Day for him with her next weekend. So anyway, my one daughter and my probably my grandson will come. And we will go take him to lunch and so forth. Um, yeah, I want him to feel special because he is special. Anyway, thank you so much again for watching. And I will catch you in my next one. Bye, y'all.